Hi, I'm Rick Conlon. I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about four pillars for excellent execution. And this is probably one of the most important things related to organizational success today. And what I talk about may rattle a few feathers, but I think it'll be mindful to you about what we dig into. And you'll see what I mean by that as we talk about it. <clears throat> and you see some pictures that I put up here. And what we've got is the Bugatti sports car, go 267 miles per hour. The SR71 Blackbird, it can go Mach 3. And we have Usain Bolt, the world record holder in 100 meters, at 9.58 seconds. And why do I put these up here? I don't know if uh, you're like me, but as we work in organizations, we found that organizations, boom, want to get action now. They want things to happen quick, and you're under the gun. Is that true for you? So speed becomes important. And what we talk about with these four pillars will help you. And I think we need to remember that our employees can be superstars at what they do. I think we sell our employees short too often in terms of what their capabilities are. However, if we create the right framework for them to win, they can be champions at what they do. So most companies and managers today need to drive brilliant execution to get to the next level. Would you agree with me? I mean, there's lots of change going on in organizations, and everybody talks about pushing the needle or expanding your comfort zone or getting to that next level, raising the bar. That's what we're after with execution. Why would we make changes anyway? And so a tremendous amount of time is spent on these plans and these strategies and uh, the thoughts uh, by especially executive leadership. But you know what? Check me if I'm wrong. By the time we get to the end of the first quarter and begin the second quarter, a lot of the plans look like this. You can't tell heads or tails of what's going on, really. Can you relate to what I'm talking about here? Do you, I mean, has this ever happened where you've been at? Absolutely. And so all that effort on the strategy, because of poor execution, there's a problem. That's what we're talking about. Now, Fortune uh, magazine survey on execution effectiveness came up with some startling statistics, and you'll see all of these here listed. I only want to talk about a few of them, and I have them highlighted in bold. Get this now. 10% of CEOs believe in their execution capabilities. In other words, they've got the strategy, here's the plan, okay, but they don't think their team can do it. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? And 27% of the plans, only 27%, I should say, are really based on employee workload. In other words, that isn't given much thought. I remember one company that we were uh, hoping to engage, and they needed to change. They were hard-pressed by competition. Uh, their sales were going backwards 4% or 5% uh, every year for the last three years, so they were going through this change process. We engaged the president, talked to him about how important the people were and what they were doing, and we need to consider what's going on and what might work, what doesn't work. He didn't want to talk about it. It was all about the new process they were going to put in to have just-in-time inventory, and so we didn't get the job. Now, you know what happened? A year later, that president left. He didn't make it, and sales continued to go backwards. Now they're getting bought out or merging, I guess, is the case that's going on. That's the problem here. And then notice this other one that I have bolded here. 82% of when CEOs believe that execution is crucial. In other words, they got to execute effectively, yet they don't believe it's going to work. <laughs> and then the last one, 95% of managers once the strategy is laid out, really don't understand what's expected. No wonder there are execution problems in organization. And why do these strategies fail? There's a lack of goals. There's a lack of buy-in. There's resistance to change. Too many priorities. I remember coming across one company and you know, doing an interview, and they had 100 change initiatives in their organization. Could you imagine being in a meeting with that organization, being one of the field managers, and they're hearing about all this, and how they could just be slinking in their chairs? By the way, that organization's sales went backwards last year. <laughs> no accountability for following through, lack of capability in 
people and resources, poor communication and an ongoing process, strategy and culture aren't aligned, lack of planning tools, rewards not tied to success. And then I suppose you could add 11th, sometimes the strategy is wrong. But what we found in our research is usually isn't the strategy, although J.C. Penney had a wrong strategy and that didn't work for them. But it's usually some of these items. And what do you think kind of ties a lot of these together? I'll get to that in just a moment. Cotter, probably the change master of all time, said 75% of change initiatives fail. Imagine here the loss of money of time and effort and impact on people's lives. Because usually when change initiatives don't work, people get laid off and all kinds of havoc is the result. But I'm here to tell you there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is something that can be done about it. And it's an ingredient that's just forgotten and I've already alluded to it and we just need to pay attention to it. Wouldn't you agree? You know, what it comes down to is technology or people. So many organizations base their change on technology and what needs to be done. So what I'm going to share with you is classified. It's classified. I think it's locked somewhere in a vault under the Federal Reserve uh, for uh, the U.S. Maybe it's in Fort Knox with all the gold. And here it is. Execution fails primarily because the lack of support for employees. That's the key. You can take that to the bank. Now, when organizations change, they need to probably add new technology to stay abreast for what's happening. That's a, that's a given. But people should be considered first. Why? Because people have to execute the strategy. But if they aren't bought in, if they aren't prepared, if they aren't involved, if they aren't engaged in what's going on, they will resist. If not openly, subconsciously, and they will delay and waste time and sabotage the effort. And it, it gets in the way of any change process that a company has. And they will not execute to their capabilities. And that's a death knell for the organization. And it's certainly an obstacle for any manager that has to get it done. So I'm going to give you a solution. The four pillars that can help you break through that. So let's go through the WCW execution formula. And what we want to do here is drive sustainable results. There are four pillars. Plan, train, coach, renew. Notice we've got it in a little bit of a formula, top line, bottom line here, to get those results. And planning is about people understand what the strategy is, both at the organizational level and what they're responsible for. Training is, of course, preparing them to be able to do whatever strategy requires. So it could be in customer service, it could be in sales, it could be a new uh, software, whatever it is, that they get the tools and resources and the development to be able to do it well. So they feel good and they win. And then coaching is working them through the problems. And, or, and helping them as they run into inevitable obstacles that always come up. And then renew is watching the team, understanding the team, meeting with them one-on-one -on -one in a group in, in ways you need to to keep them focused because uh, enthusiasm wanes. And when problems come up, people get frustrated, disappointed, and we need to bring them back to why are we doing this? How are we doing this? How is it going to help you? That kind of thing. So these are the four pillars. Now, I want you to see, we can actually measure this and look at how we're doing as leaders. If you look here, that on top line, we've got a way to rate these on a scale of one to five. Five means to a high degree, one means to a lower degree. So planning is about clarity of expectations and goals. Okay, Competence is about training people so they know what to do and how to do it. Um, <clears throat> coaching is about engaging them to keep the commitment to do it well, to rise above, to go the extra mile. And then renew is really about the consistency that we keep it moving forward when we, uh, you know, get sidetracked, you know. Uh, improving results isn't always like this. It kind of goes like this. But we only get like this going up is if we renew the effort. Uh, you know, understanding what my team needs in terms of communication and recognition and a listening ear, or empathy, uh, maybe a redirection to help them stay focused on what they do. So if you notice on the top line, we have a number. Let's say we're rated five to a high degree in clarity, competence, and commitment. And then in the bottom line, the scale is reversed on consistency. One means almost always. Five means almost never. 
So let's say in this case, as we're rolling on our change, we're in good position. We got fives on the top, we got a one on the bottom, we divide it out, we get 15. Our propensity for winning is high, we got a 15 score. That means we're going to do very well because we're doing all these areas, see? Now let's change one thing on this. One point. The top line stays the same. We got all fives, we're good. The bottom line, which means the renew factor or our consistency, in other words, you don't talk about it that much, we don't measure it, we don't keep training, we don't have meetings about it, we don't listen to feedback, we don't make adjustments. That's what consistency and renew is all about, to keep the team focused moving forward. But let's say we give ourselves a two on that, which means to a high degree, but not almost always. Notice what happens to our rating. What do you see? Our opportunity for success is cut in half. Do you see that? And how many times have you been in an organization where the company implemented some change and they had a good start, but then they didn't follow up on it. They didn't reinforce it. They didn't check in on it. They didn't measure it. In fact, one of the statistics that we shared earlier said most organizations don't do a good job of measuring their execution of strategy on how they're doing. So it's not far-fetched to say that we might not be as consistent in that as we might be. Now notice if our consistency rating was even lower, we're heading for disaster, right? So what we need to do as leaders is pay attention to all these areas. We need to focus on the planning. And that's both on a team level and on an individual level. The training, the coaching, and the renew factor. And as we do that, we have sustainable results. We've been very successful in helping companies as they roll out strategies, whether they're changed or not, to be successful at it, to get 48% improvement, 122% improvement, 10 to 12 points on customer surveys or employee engagement surveys. Companies working at it for four years and we get it done in four months. Why? Because we focus here. Very few organizations do. And you can do the same to get those kinds of results. See, what we have to pay attention to as leaders is both the skill and the spirit of our team. The skill falls in the category of planning and training. The spirit falls in the category of coaching and renew. That's what leads to success. And if we balance both of those and do it consistency, boy, I tell you what, you're going to outperform other departments. You'll outperform other managers. You will be noticed as a leader in terms of your effectiveness. That's what we're talking about here. That's how we win. It really comes down to this question. Are your employees mercenary soldiers? In other words, they're hired guns to get the job done, or are they spirited patriots? And what we help them do through plan, train, coach, and renew is become spirited patriots. They want to do it for their reasons. It's, it creates a momentum of itself. And it is possible, I'm here to tell you, that it is proven it can get done. So where are you in all this? Where will you do a better job? And I want to bring you back to, is it worth it? Certainly it is, because we're impacting people's lives as a leader. A leader's job is to bring out the best in others. Here's a picture of little Alex Molina, six years old, 30 plus surgeries uh, because of a childhood disease that he has. And here he is with a new leg. And I saw a video of him jumping around laughing and having a great time, full of life. <laughs> you know what it reminded me of? Is we need that kind of stuff in organizations too. It seems like some of these companies you go into, uh, you know, it's dead. You, you can't hear anything. It's kind of like uh, a sign over Harvard Business School that I think I heard Tom Peters say this one time, he who enters here will never smile again. There's no fun, there's no energy, there's no enthusiasm. Uh, and it's on this priority to that priority, to this priority to that priority, and not a lot of follow-through and reinforcement to get it done. It's worth it as a leader to do that with your team, whether you're leading the corporate as a company or you're a manager in the guts of the organization. Steve Prefontaine, one of the most successful runners of all time, notice I didn't say decorated, because his goal was to go full blast all the time. And he said this, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. I believe when we become a manager, a leader in an organization, we have a gift. We have the gift to uh, help our people win. And if we help them be successful, then we'll be successful the leader. And we tell leaders, hey, the way to get it done is that you have to uh, become a better leader. 
If you want your team to be better, be a better leader. And hopefully this information that I've shared with you will give you some food for thought about success uh, as a leader. And what you can do is you execute strategy. Our goal with our book and our superstar leadership model is to revolutionize the success of managers and organizations to be much more effective, especially those in the guts of the organization who have all the responsibility and accountability, not always all the tools and resources to get it done. You know, you go to our blog and you'll find lots of things that can help you. Be a student of the game. No excuses. I have this dream that soars on golden wings. I visualize your achievements and your legacy that sings. I do not know all about your awesome goals or your persistent efforts to raise the bar. I only know that you can be the best, a superstar. Thanks for coming, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Take care.